All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how we can determine where the center of mass of an object comprised of multiple parts or it can be found. So first of all, what is the center of mass? So when we've looked at this in like previous mechanics things, the center of mass is where you can model the weight force of a an object from. So if you've got a beam, it will be from like the center of the beam. So for a uniform object, many of which you'll come across in this course, you can actually find the center of mass at the geometric center, and that's what this video is going to be about, finding the geometric center of various different objects. Okay, so if we look down here at this diagram here, we've got a square and we say the center of, well, we know the geometric center is here, so that must be where the center of mass is as long as it's a uniform object. So in order to calculate the center of mass of a series of objects all put together, we need to use a very simple equation, but in order to understand where it comes from, we need to be thinking about the principles of moments. So what it's saying is the moments of the weight forces of each of the particles separately should be equal to the weight for some of the weight force of all of them uh, multiplied by the distance to the center of the mass in a given direction. So that's written this way here. And we'll notice because they're both weight forces, there's g's in both. So we can get rid of the g's from your calculation. To get left with this term here, which you will need to learn, this is your equation that governs centers of mass. We could equally replace x with y or x with z and apply it in three dimensions, but this is a nice simple example. So what does this actually mean in reality? So if we've got an object made of three particles, this sum mx term would look like this. So it's the mass of an object times the distance we're measuring in the x direction, so from the distance from the x direction. And this x bar is the distance of the center of mass. And then we've got the sum of the masses, which is your sum of m there. So let's put this into an example so you can see how this works. All right, so let's have a look at this question. So um, in terms of the dimensions on this, I've got drawn these dotted lines in here. You'll often have to do them for yourself. But so we've got three identical four by two meter blocks. So these are the three blocks shown here. This longer side is four meters. The shorter side is two. And we want to know the location of the center of mass. So if they're the same identical, that means they all have the same mass. So that's so we know that's four, we know that's four, and we know that's four, and that's two, and that's four in there. So let's look at the x direction first. So the distance to the center of mass of that one is that distance there. We've got that distance there, and we've got this distance here. So looking specifically in the x direction, so the mass of the first object multiplied by the distance from that dotted line on the left, that's how we're measuring our x distances, plus the next one, so we know it's identical, so it's going to be m again, so it's going to be 4 plus 2, so it gives you 6, and 4 plus 2 gives you 6 there. We know that's equal to the distance in the x direction of our center of mass, multiplied by the sum of the masses, which is going to be 3 times m. So that leaves you with x bar is equal to, let's cancel some terms off so we can cancel all of these m's, which leaves you with 2. So the x, the direct center of mass in the x direction, so in this direction, is 14 over 3, um, which is what? So th 4 and a 2 thirds, so, so somewhere around here, which shouldn't be too surprising, so we're around that location. So applying it in the x direction as well. So we now need to think in terms of this distance here, this distance here, this distance here, when looking at the y, so that's 2 plus 1, so that's 3, 3, and 1. So the same process again, 
m multiplied by 3 plus m multiplied by 3 plus m multiplied by 1 is the centre mass in the y direction, distance times by total. So this is the y direction. Again, let's cancel our m's out as we did before. 3 plus 3 plus 1 gives you 7 over 3. So that's the distance from this horizontal line at the bottom. So 7 3 is just over 2, which would put it along this line here, which again shouldn't be surprising. So your centre of mass is somewhere around here. Now it is theoretically possible to find that your centre of mass is actually not in the object, and this is something you might be interested to look at as how trapeze artists actually work. They manage to move their centre of mass below the wire in which they're walking. So it is theoretically possible to have a centre of mass in this empty space, and you'll see some examples of where that might be the case. All right, so that's that worked example. And there's a nice typed out version in case you couldn't read any of my handwriting, some nice diagrams there. All right, so now we've looked at that, let's have a look at some sneaky shortcuts so you can avoid doing excessive calculations. So first of all, if for a uniform shape, if the object has a line of symmetry, the center of mass must be on it. So if we're looking here, if we draw in our sort of y and x directions, we know that the center of mass in the x direction must be on this line already, so we don't need to bother to calculate it, we don't need to be interested in the y direction here. But if we have 2, then let's take this as our y direction and this as our x If we have 2, we know that is our x bar and that is our y bar. So we actually don't need to do any calculations whatsoever if we know the dimensions of the shape, which is a very nice thing to do. The other thing you might see is a lamina like this with a particle added onto it. So it will just be like you've got a three kilogram particle attached to it here. And the center of mass of that particle is at the particle's location. So effectively what you've got is two objects here, but all of the mass of this is concentrated to a point. So let's have a look at an example with that. So we've got a lamina here, and a lamina is just a two-dimensional object, so its thickness is considered negligible. And we want to know the coordinates of the center of mass of the 10 kilogram lamina with particles attached at each of those places, and instead we're going to use position vectors to solve this. So last time we, we looked in two directions separately, this time I want to use position vectors to make it a simpler process. So let's draw in our, our vectors. Okay. So I'm going to call that one 1. Now we know this is a rectangle which two has like two lines of symmetry. So we know its center of mass is going to be directly at the center. And finally, we've got this one here like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take moments about this point here. So this is where our equation is going to be built from. And we're going to call that 0, 0. So let's think about the coordinates of these points. If it's 14 meters long, that must mean if this is halfway, it's 7 meters long. And obviously, it's 9 meters up. That one, again, 7, but it's only halfway up, so it's 4.5. And this one here, coordinates are going to be 14, 0, because it's no high, no high. So let's set up our equation. So we know that the mass of the first object, so 3, times, and you've got the second object there, which is the whole thing, which we had was 10. And the final particle on the right hand side, which we know is 7. We know that's going to be some position vector x bar y bar multiplied by the power of the masses, which is going to be 3 plus 7, plus 10, like that. 
So what we want to do is rearrange this to get our expression like this. So 3 plus 7 plus 10 gives you 20, so we're going to divide that across, so whatever it is, it's 1 over 20. Uh, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 10 times 7 is 70, plus 7 times 14 is 70 plus 28, so 98. All over 27 plus 45 plus 0, which gives you 1 over 20, 1, 8, 9 over 72. Okay, so in, we actually wanted the coordinates of it, so it would be in this form, and so it's going to be 189 over 20, because there's no way of cancelling that at all. Over 72 divided by 20, they both have... Uh, so then it would end up being 36 over 10, so 18 over 5. And those are the coordinates of the centre of mass of that object. So there we go, as usual, the nice, nice typed out solution to this problem like this. It's a much nicer way of going about the problem. So instead of looking at two directions separately, you can condense it into one calculation by working with position vectors, which is quite nice. And when you go into three dimensions, it's even nicer. So I would advise you to stick with using position vectors rather than trying to solve them individually.